Goku is a creature fundamentally driven by what Friedrich Nietzsche called the will to power, a pervasive force that underlies all aspects of existence, shaping both the physical and metaphysical realms. Goku is someone whose purpose in life is derived from self-enhancement and self-improvement. Dragon Ball is a series about always looking forward to what's next, always trying to become the best you can be to overcome all the enemies in your path. Goku is a content character with a flat character arc. Apart from overcoming his limits, he doesn't strongly want anything. He doesn't seem to be primarily motivated by outside factors. He's a character who's very internally motivated. He seeks personal development out of the sheer joy of self-evolution, a visceral yet light instinct only made harnessed by the delicate way he takes life. This makes him stronger than he otherwise would have been. When the Ginyu Force take over Goku's body and try to harness his strength, they can't do it and I believe that this is why. They're trying to force Goku's power out, but they don't understand that that's not how you optimally use Goku's power. Something similar can be said for when Goku comes out of the time chamber much stronger than Vegeta and Trunks. It's one thing to perform Herculean acts of willpower to gain strength, it's another entirely to try and maintain that level effortlessly. After he comes out of the time chamber, he is perpetually in the Super Saiyan state with Gohan. They have an effortless and non-conscious access to all of their power. Goku is someone who is in complete control of his power and strives to do so effortlessly, having that power harnessed as if it were part of himself. It's through the heightened intensity of the hyperbolic time chamber that this is possible. They were training on a high altitude and have now dropped down to sea level. Being in a Super Saiyan state at all times is sort of akin to what happens when we work on ourselves. We change our baseline and reform our very nature. This is done through the inculcation of virtue. While it may not be as effortless and joyful as Goku, and in all fairness, it's not like Goku is always at his maximum level of happiness, I still see Goku as a symbol of where our end goal could be. Through rigorous virtue, we can change our nature and enjoy almost a new creation. This new creation we become is like our Super Saiyan state relatively speaking, and this becomes our baseline. In bodybuilding language, this is like you looking at yourself with a pump and being surprised. But then in due time, assuming consistent effort, your baseline self will soon resemble your previous self when pumped. Thus, your baseline becomes your previous Super Saiyan state. That point that used to only be accessible through intense grit is now a baseline level of strength for us. This is also similar to when Goku fought Beerus in the Battle of Gods movie. At first, he needed the aid of all the other Saiyans to reach that red state, but in the middle of his battle, he ended up matching his Super Saiyan God form in base. In a way, he once again remade himself and matched his previous peak effortlessly, similar to the Super Saiyan state in the Time Chamber. Power, according to Nietzsche, is the prime motivator for action, and Aristotle deemed victory over the self to be chief among all victories. Taken together, Goku, by mastering his self, learning new techniques every battle, and growing not with the primary goal of being above his opponents, but being above his previous self, is constantly reaching his highest form of victory and becoming the most powerful man he can be. Every new challenge not only represents a new frontier and thus a new zenith of Goku's power, it represents a new summit of his character. Goku, after defeating Buu, is more of himself in the most authentic and genuine way than he was against Cell, or against Frieza, or against Vegeta. The will to power is a furious force of continual becoming. It is continuously realizing your unique potential over and over and over to eternity. You reach the point where you are so yourself that when you look back on your previous selves, they become unrecognizable and unrelatable to your current self. No matter what comes Goku's way, he will fight to overcome it by becoming more of himself in a glad act of self-realization. Goku shows that we can fight to overcome our enemies and become our best self. That's what Goku is to me. He is someone who is always improving himself physically and mentally. He's on a never-ending pursuit of becoming better and realizing more about himself. His Ultra Instinct is, in a way, the pinnacle of this. There was no yelling during this transformation. It was a melodic and calm transformation. He is so in tune with himself in the battle that his body will move on its own, as if propelled by some unconscious, ever-present will. His body and mind are so perfectly in sync to where they don't even need to communicate with each other. They're just moving where they need to be at all times. 
Goku is one of my favorite characters in fiction and played a great role in inspiring me to work out. An act that has clearly played a big role in my adulthood so far. Akira Toriyama is one of the most influential authors of our time, and his fingerprints are present all over contemporary shonen anime. One Piece and Hunter x Hunter are probably my favorite series, and they are very much influenced by Dragon Ball. But even beyond that, it's also video games like Sonic the Hedgehog, another series that played a foundational role in my life. Thank you Akira Toriyama for the once in a generation influence you had on the world, and for the incomprehensible influence you had on my life.